in order. Uh, before we call the order, I just want to we want to apologize to the public. Um, unfortunately, our six o'clock meeting, which was scheduled to have the DOT here present the what was going to be the what is the final plan design for the train stop down down on near the river. Unfortunately, we had some technical difficulties, so we hope to have them back. Uh, at the very least, you know, we will have a we'll have, be able to have a formal report of their presentation. But again, we apologize for the technical difficulties, but again, credit to our staff for writing a ship and we're here at seven o'clock. Um, this is the regular meeting of the Enfield Town Council, Monday, March 15th, 2021. We are at seven o'clock and please rise for the prayer for Councillor Muller. Dear Lord, as winter turns to spring, we look forward to warmer weather, spending time with family and friends and new hope with the end of the pandemic. Over the past 12 months, we have faced many challenges because of COVID virus. But now with the vaccine, we look forward to open businesses, hugs for our family and kids back in school. We pray for all who have suffered with the virus and for so many who have lost loved ones. We give thanks for all the doctors and nurses who care for the sick as they are truly the real heroes. We also pray for this town council as we do the work for the people of Enfield. May our decisions create a better life for all we serve. We pray this in our Lord's name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please, Sheila. Councillor Muller. Here. Here. Councillor Riley. Here. Councillor Suprasa. Here. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Here. Councillor Ungar. Here. Councillor Bosco. Here. Councillor Sakala. Here. Councillor Crisotti. Here. Councillor Hemler. Here. Mayor Ludwig. Here. Councillor Mangini. Here. The 11 members present, none absent. Thank you, Sheila. Moving on to item four, the fire evacuation announcement. In case of a fire, we have doors to our to our left and right at the uh, back of the town council chambers. Please orderly go out those doors or doors to our left. That when you go out through these doors, there's going to be doors right to your left. Go down the stairs and orderly out into the parking lot in case of a fire. Uh, moving on to item five, minutes of the preceding meeting. Meeting, excuse me. Special meeting March 1st, 2021. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. By Council Mangini, seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. Is there any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none by show of hands. All those in favor? Opposed, abstentions. Sheila, 11 in favor, zero against. Do I have a motion to approve the regular meeting of March 1st? So uh, moved. Uh, do the uh, uh, motion made by Councilor Muller, seconded Second. by Councilor Ungeyer. Is there any additions, deletions, or uh, corrections to the regular meeting of March 1st? Hearing none by show of hands. All those in favor? Opposed, abstentions, 11 in favor, Sheila, zero against. We move on to item six, special guest. Again, we apologize for the six o'clock meeting. We hope to have DOT back for another presentation. Moving right over to item seven, public communications. Um, folks who'd like to speak for the public, again, name and address, and please refrain from personalities. Sir, welcome. And you actually can speak to, so I want to make sure it's clear. I was wrong, and Deputy Mayor Suzak was right. You have five minutes, then you have three minutes for, you have twice up the first time. I only need four minutes and 20 seconds. I just want to make sure. <laughs> sorry. I want to make sure I'm giving you the right information. Thank Welcome. You. Sorry. Thank you. You have the floor. Uh, John Santanella, 1204 Enfield Street. About 18 months ago, I raised a question regarding voter instructions on our municipal election ballots. I had asked for an explanation as to why voters were limited to cast only four votes for seven open at-large town council seats. At the time, I wasn't able to get a clear understanding from anyone here at Town Hall, so I took this matter to the State Elections and Enforcement Commission. And in their finding dated May 20th, 2020, I received some clarification as to the origins of this instruction. The finding reads in part as follows. Connecticut General Statute 9188 states that elections for boards of selectmen, voters shall not vote for more candidates than any political party can elect. This section specifically pertains to elections for selectmen. 
and may provide a historical basis for Enfield's four vote limitation. The town of Enfield switched from a board of selectmen to our current council manager government in the mid 1960s. And arguably, the town, town officials carried over the limitations of this statute to the first town council elections and has continued that practice ever since. There are other statutes that limit the number of candidates a party can nominate, and our charter specifically says that no more than four of the seven at-large candidates shall be from the same political party. But nothing in the SEEC finding concludes either that by statute or by our own charter that Enfield voters must be limited to only four votes. In fact, the finding states that the charter is silent on how many of the seven at-large counselors electors are entitled to choose. While the commission found that the four vote limit was a reasonable measure uh, to ensure the requirements for minority representation on the council, it did not say that this limitation was a necessary limitation. And in fact, it is not. The requirement to ensure minority representation on the council can also be met if voters are able to cast five, six, or seven votes on the ballot. To be absolutely clear with everybody, there is no statutory violation uh, by, the, by the four vote instruction, and no statute would be violated with a seven vote instruction. The decision on how many electors a voter may cast is determined solely at the discretion of the town of Enfield. It is one thing to have the opportunity to vote for a candidate and choose not to exercise that vote, but it is totally different not to be given that opportunity at all. Enfield voters should have the opportunity to cast one vote for every open at-large seat on this town council. The current practice is outdated and should be changed. In addition, it would be helpful to understand whose decision this is and what needs to happen in order for those instructions to change. I would hope that this council would give this matter more attention than five minutes of public comment from this one Enfield voter and take whatever steps are necessary to give all Enfield voters the opportunity to vote for each at-large candidate they would like to see represent them in the November election. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. You have, you want to, you have three, another chance? You're I don't good? have anything right. else to say. I'm going to make it easy for Thank you. Thank you. I want to make sure. Thank you. <laughs> Declare public communications closed. We move on to councilor communications. Any councilor have any communications? Councilor Riley, Councilor Mangini, Councilor Sferraza. <clears throat> so I just wanted to announce I did it at the Board of Ed meeting uh, a couple weeks ago, but um, I'm the president of First Readers, and I just wanted to say that we're having a ceremony this year, which I am super excited about because we haven't had one since um, last March, which was the week before um, all the kids couldn't go back to school. So we have a year full of first readers we're going to take care of. It's going to be at S. Nuntuck Community College, which is an awesome partner with us, and I can't thank them enough. So a big shout out and thank you to them. It's going to be on Monday, May 24th. It's going to be drive through style through the college. And um, we're going to have it in waves, so each school will have their own time to come. Uh, we'll send invitations out. Uh, probably around when April vacation happens. And um, if you want to come, please um, RSVP so we know because I'm going to have to have um, your bag of swag made up for you before um, you come through so we don't have a big line out on the main drag. So I wanted to say that. Um, and then another point I wanted to bring up is because we have daylight savings, the weather's getting better. I just kind of wanted to remind everybody, the kids are going to be outside playing, and if you could, you know, follow the speed limit in neighborhoods, because there will be kids out riding their bikes and everything like that. So if you could do that, that'd be great. Um, and I just wanted to say that I really enjoyed volunteering at the vaccine clinic. I know a lot of other counselors up here um, have done so. And 
I think it's going great over there. It's well run and it's pretty smooth. And um, I wanted to thank all the volunteers that put the time out. And um, I wanted to thank uh, Deb McCarthy, especially because she's coordinating all the volunteers and she's done a whole lot to help out. So big thank you to Deb. She's a rock star in town. And um, I hope everybody has a great St. Patrick's Day. Thanks. Thank you, Council Mangini and Council Sferraza. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you, um, Charlotte, uh, for the Deb McCarthy praise. Deb has done a phenomenal job, not only uh, with the COVID clinic vaccinations, but all around. I, I think every council member up here will agree that, you know, Deb has come through in many, many facets, uh, uh, you know, for our um, residents and for our purposes. I'm very thankful. And I, I think publicly she needs to be recognized and acknowledged for her hard work and dedication. It goes above and beyond her normal paycheck. So I thank you for bringing that out. And then I do want to ask through our mayor if uh, Mr. Santanella's um, request and uh, information regarding voting might be taken up uh, through our town attorney's office um, at some point. I thought maybe we should, um, you know, at, at least put an eye on what um, Mr. Santanella is referring to. And I do want to wish everyone a happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Sparraza. I was really going to say the same thing as Councilor uh, Mancini said. Uh, Mr. Talbert, I, I would like you um, just to confirm what Mr. Santanella said. But more specifically, I'm especially interested to know who in the town has the ability to make that change if it's so deemed appropriate is it the council is it a, a vote I, I just don't know how that would work so if you could check that i'd appreciate it thank you anyone else councillor hamler um last week there was a fire at uh, freshwater apartments um eight eight families were affected and um, i've spoken to joanna at youth services and i just wanted to say she's done a great job and and help coordinate helping helping these people i've also talked to cindy Guerrero, and they're um, in the process of just really e evaluating everything to see how uh, we can help um, what, what I'm hoping is that they can set up something so the public can also help. So just wanted to let you know that's in process and maybe in two weeks I'll be able to report something else. Thank you. Anyone else? Councilor Corsati? Uh, yeah, a couple of things of, uh, of mention. Um, the uh, Enfield Together Coalition has been working on a, a marketing campaign and the, their campaigns that they, they've been focusing on is, uh, and this is a big one, is mental health, alcohol and drug abuse, vaping and prescription uh, drug use. Um, so there's going to be, um, you know, periodic every couple months uh, posters that are going to be changed that the four uh, locations that, um, that we have up right now and you know keeping kids safe and healthy um, the, the use of alcohol uh, marijuana prescription drugs um, and what they're looking for is is focusing on the positive and not the negative so i just wanted to put that out there that the enfield together coalition uh, has been working real hard on that that campaign uh, also, uh, in regard to what Councillor Hemmler stated in regard to the, the fire, uh, I'd like to thank the, the Red Cross and their assistance with the Enfield, uh, excuse me, the Thompsonville Fire De Department. You know, there were 15 adults and ch 12 children displaced in that fire. And, uh, and yes, the Social Service Department has done a fantastic job in, in, in assisting with that. Um, and the last thing that I just want to mention was uh, last week was the National Employees Appreciation Day, and I'd like to express my thank you to all the town workers in every department for their daily efforts in making Enfield a great municipality. Uh, we have some very talented craftsmen 
and workers that work at DPW and the, and the buildings and grounds and their way that they are completing projects, uh, you know, that were designed for them to complete. And that means that instead of outsourcing these jobs, uh, saving the town money. So they are, they are to be commended uh, on, their, on their work and, and, and their performance. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Well, first of all, I, you know, I listened to um, Mr. Santanella and the, the seven votes, and I just wonder if someone can give me a mathematical analysis of what would happen if everyone cast seven votes and how that would look as for all our recounts and everything as we recounted and counted and counted again and counted again. Seven may not be the optimum number. Four is probably the optimum number as far as the two-party system goes, but there may be something in between four and seven that's more optimum for elimination and doing um, a voting that, that makes sense. So that, that's my two cents on that. And I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules and move items E, F, G, H, I, J, K, and L to miscellaneous and proceed to vote. Motion so moved. Made. By Deputy Mayor Suzak, seconded by Councilor Ungar to, to suspend the rules and move the items to miscellaneous for vote. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing about show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed, abstentions, that's 11 in favor, Sheila, zero against. Anyone else? Hearing none, declare Councilor Communications closed. Um, item nine, Town Manager Report. Um, uh, Chris, our uh, Town Manager, Chris Bronson, you have the floor, sir. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the Council. Just a couple of matters. Um, one, as you can see, we reinstated our report. It is backed by popular demand. There's a lot of useful information. We will be posting it. Um, I would also echo the, the wonderful job that Deb McCarthy is doing. It, it really is a Herculean task to schedule this number of uh, volunteers. And you probably have heard today, as of Friday, March 19th, the governor has lowered the age. So anybody 45 and older will be eligible. And then again, on April 15th, 16 uh, and above. So there's going to be a, a big upsurge and the clinic Trinity is increasing hours on Monday. And they're going to be increasing the number of people coming every day starting next week. So it's going to be quite an undertaking because our commitment of volunteers will increase. So I would just urge people, we've had a wonderful response from in our town and people as far away as uh, downstate Coscob, Connecticut, a woman contacted Deb and wanted to drive it. So our commute each way, I wanted to give back to not only, you know, um, her state, she said, not her community, but her state. And that's kind of the sentiment. Um, so please, anybody who's interested, go online. There's an application process. And I would also like to commend uh, Maya Matthews in my office because, you know, Deb still has all of her other duties to do. So Maya has been going. They've been alternating to be at the uh, clinic uh, in person. And Maya has been doing a wonderful job supervising the volunteers on scene. So it really does take uh, all hands on deck with this. So anybody who would like to volunteer, please go to the website and you can file the application. And it's, a, it's going to be a long, road because we have the rest of March, all of April, all of May, and then the second shots into June. And they're going to be going, uh, as I said, increasing up to their full capacity of almost 640 people a day. Um, and that's all I have in my uh, report, Mr. Mayor. Is there any questions for the town manager? Hearing that, oh, Chris, great job on the par. I mean, it's, it's so great to have that back. And if Alex is listening, we'd like to invite, we're going to do something a little unusual. Because of the events tonight, Alex, you're welcome. I'm not forcing you. So again, we want to apologize because you know, our staff, and of course, again, we want to give credit to DOT. They put together a full. You got the. You got. They put a full presentation together, and again, with technology, things happen. Yes. And but I, what I want to emphasize is how. Again, I want to commend the council for having a sense of humor about it. We apologize to the public. We apologize to DOT. What well, certainly wasn't any intention. However, Alex sat here, and you won't see this on TV, and tried everything you possibly could do to get this, at least for our regular meeting, you know, um, to be, be able to be televised and go forward. So, again, we're going to turn what was we all a little bit of a negative into a positive. Alex, sir, you have the floor. Anything, words of wisdom you'd like to give the public? I'm good. I'm, I'm good on that. <laughs> Don't just, I mean, so... 
I want to. I don't want to put Alex in the spot. So Tanner. instead of just you know, instead of just getting mad and saying, "Oh, we couldn't do it," right. to his credit, he found another solution. He worked with his team, and again, we're having our meeting. So, sir, I just want to make sure that people knew. Again, this wasn't obviously this was an accident or whatever technology happens, but our staff continued to try to f fix the problem, and you came up with the creative solution to fix the problem. And I wanted to make sure you got your kudos, and we want to say thank you to you. Thank you, thank Mr. You Mayor. Job. It's kind of like kind of like um, when you see on one of the uh, big news shows they turn the camera on the uh, cameraman who makes it all possible. It's the behind the scenes, behind the curtain, and that's Alec. He's done an incredible job over the last year. Uh, Paul Russell, too, and uh, we did, as you know, reconfigure uh, ETV uh, about a year and a half ago. We increased the responsibilities of Alex, and he has certainly lived up uh, to those expectations. We thank him, um, and as you all know, we, we're, we're glad to have Alex. We had his dad, Jose Kiner, who was our town planner, so I guess this the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Thank you, Alex. Thanks, Chris. Anyone who's worse him? This is actually the first time in the 11, 12 years I've been employed here that I'm actually on this side of the fence. <laughs> well, well right, maybe we'll have you come back. Thank you. We'll have you come back with some cameos. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alex. We appreciate it. Mr. Mayor, to that point, thank you. I will just let you know that we do thank DOT uh, for agreeing to come this evening. And even though they weren't here uh, tonight, they have given us their uh, PowerPoint presentation, and it's very informative. We will post that tomorrow. We will then be getting back with them to see if they'd like to narrate it. We'll post it tomorrow. And they said in the interim, um, before we have them come back, that any questions that the council or the public has after they see the presentation to get to my office and we'll forward it to them and they'll address those uh, hopefully again in person, depending on the schedule. But they've been great partners. Uh, they, it, there's a good timeline. It's a very visual presentation. So unfortunately, we, we couldn't be live, but we'll post that tomorrow on the town manager's website. Awesome. Thank you for that update so that the public knows it's out there. Any other questions for the town manager? Again, we thank Alex for his, again, having a little bit of a sense of humor as well. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chris. We move on to item 10, town attorney report. Attorney Talbert. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, two things quickly. Uh, Councillor Mangini and Councillor Sferraza, with regard to Mr. Santanella's question about uh, the four at-large seats. That uh, authority derives from Charter Section 2 at page 6 of 24, which provides that biennially, uh, biennial, biennially there shall be seven at-large uh, councillors, no more than four of whom shall be of the same political party. Uh, as Mr. Santanella indicated, that section was challenged by him and the SEEC held that it was up to the town. It's within the town's discretion to set that. For reasons that predate me and perhaps many of us, um, that provision is in the charter. In my experience, I'd need to double check, but in my experience, charter reform uh, is a very laborious process. It requires a charter revision commission with a l mandatory minimum number of meetings over a lengthy period of time, I think two public hearings. So it would be within uh, the town's authority and discretion if you wish to take up charter reform. I don't know that there's any quicker way to do that. I'd be happy to look into it, but my initial impression is it's a charter reform issue. Um, second thing, just real quickly, Councillor Bosco, at the last meeting you had asked about, um, there were some constituents wondering whether uh, outdoor dining would be extended, and I've had other questions since then about that. And the short answer is this. Uh, Executive Order 7MM issued by the governor last May is set to expire April 19. That's the order that uh, relaxed the requirements and specifically allowed restaurants to set up uh, outdoor dining in places they previously couldn't do it, in parking lots. And it was a relaxed administrative review process such that instead of going before the Planning and Zoning Commission, having a hearing and a vote, they had a simple administrative review. And if that administrative review didn't happen within 10 days, it was deemed that it was approved. So that's what we're operating under now. A lot of restaurants love it. It's, um, it has its uh, things that you would commend uh, it, it for, but it's gonna expire April 19. There are two competing legislative proposals. One is from the governor to essentially expand that, codify it, make it law. 
There's another uh, uh, proposal from a state representative down in Trumbull, similarly looking to extend that and make it law. There is a little bit of pushback right now from some um, in the land use bar who argue that uh, this is an overreach, that it would take away what is uh, typically been a review process with a hearing and a, a vote of the board. Um, if the legislation passes, uh, it will be a moot issue. It will be the law, and there won't be any, any action needed by um, towns, including Enfield. So my suggestion would be this. Uh, we'll know within the next 30 days whether the executive order that's set to expire April 19 is going to get pushed out again. There's a lively debate right now where a lot of municipalities are uh, pushing the governor to extend these at least until you get your budgets done. Push the dates out one last time until maybe July 1 and then reset the clock. And so I expect that between now and perhaps July, we'll have an answer about that. If the orders expire and there is no legislative fix, then to extend the outdoor dining would be within the authority of the PZC. And that's something uh, the town attorney's office, we could work with them uh, if they thought that it was something in their discretion they wanted to do. So I'd sit back, we'll keep an eye on it. I'll keep you posted by April 19, and the next trigger will probably be around July. Thank you. Yep. Any questions all, for the town attorney? Oh, I'm sorry. Do you have, I'm sorry. That's all I had. Sorry. I apologize. Any other questions? Any questions for the town attorney? Thank you. Appreciate it. Moving on to uh, item 11, report of special committees of the council. Councillor Muller. Then Councillor Yeah, Mike. Uh, the health district met last Wednesday. I just had two quick updates. Yeah, go right ahead. Uh, the health district was awarded funding to continue opiate abuse prevention in the amount of 36000 I thought that was really good news. Uh, they spoke a lot about the Trinity uh, vaccine in Enfield. Uh, they call it a megapod, and they're looking to replicate that throughout the region. They want at least two more in our region, just like what we have in Enfield. So I thought that was really great news, and thank you, Chris and Debbie, for all you did to make that happen. Uh, JFK, pretty much the same. Uh, Blue Wing was turned over. They continue to work in White Wing. Uh, the auditorium they continue working on. I don't know if people have been by, but you can see the plywood up and the Tyvek, the wrap is going up as well. Uh, a lot of work inside the gym, the gymnasium, the locker room, cafeteria area. So lots happening. We met uh, last Thursday before. And everything's on the Facebook page. If you need to see pictures as well, uh, they give great updates to pictures and sometimes a caption, a tour of the area. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bosco. Yes, we uh, just received the uh, the last update on the uh, the ordinance for the trash. So we just need to review it, and then it will be coming, if it's all set, we'll be coming to the uh, council for a public hearing. And uh, we also just got the uh, list of the roads that would be done through the referendum. And we just got to go over that. And I, I just got to make sure that they uh, they put in there a different way of doing the roads, which would maybe save us some money so we can get a few more roads done. So once I find out if that's there, we're just going to review that and get that one down and uh, so we can uh, move it along to a public hearing, too. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Councilor Grisotti? Yeah, the Commission on Aging met um, last week and just want to you know give a special thank you to uh jennifer over at social services uh she has assisted and over assisted a little over 300 seniors 65 and over and helping them out setting up their vaccine appointments and um and many members of the, on the commission uh volunteer on a daily basis at at the clinic over at uh at the at the town annex um, the senior uh, home repair uh, program is still suspended at this point and the annual symposium is still on hold uh, the senior living program which is hosted by martha mcleod uh, is still uh, going on the march theme is COVID and vaccine uh, in April, they're going to be dealing with senior safety and scams 
with Mark Rocha from the Enfield Police Department. And in May, uh, they're going to be uh, interviewing both the commanders at the American Legion Post with a Memorial Day theme. Uh, and then uh, one other, there's actually two more things I am going to mention that the Senior Center is planning on opening April 5th on a hybrid model. Uh, registration for uh, in-person program and virtual programs are going to begin uh, March 22nd for Enfield residents and then on March 29th for non-residents. Uh, COVID guidelines still will be followed and space is limited. And also, uh, Sheila Grady notified the commission uh, that she's going to be leaving the senior center for another position in Ellington. Uh, I want to wish her well. Um, when she came into the senior center, this, the, the senior center was in a state of flux and her efforts brought back the life to the senior center, which ran very effectively. So I just want to say, I want to wish her well and, uh, and best, best of luck to her because I thought she did a fantastic job uh, with our Enfield Senior uh, Center and everything that she did and all the programs that she brought in. So, and that's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank Anyone you. else? Hearing none, we move on to item 12, old business. On page one, items A, one and two remain on the table. Item three remains on the table. Item four, Enfield Beautification, excuse me, Enfield Beautification Committee. Do I have a nomination, do I have a motion to remove from the table, please? By Councillor Sakala. Second. Second by Councillor Crisati. All those in favor of moving from the table by show of hands. Opposed, abstention. Sheila, 10 in favor, zero against from removing from the table. Uh, for the Enfield Beautification Committee, do I have a nomination, please? Do I have a. Do I, uh, go ahead, Councillor Sakala. Um, I would nominate, uh, I might mispronounce the name, Makala Shup. Nomination made. Second. Second by Councillor Riley. Do I have a motion to close nominations? By Deputy Mayor Suzak, seconded by Council Sparazza. All those in favor of closing nominations by a show of hands. Opposed, abstentions, 11 in favor and zero against, Sheila, of, of closing nominations. Now back to the main motion. Any discussion on the main motion? Hearing none, roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor, Councilor Muller. Four. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Four. Councilor Sparazza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Michelle Shup. Councillor Ungayer. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Kasadi. Four. Councillor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Michaela Shup. That's uh, 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Items 5 through 15 stay on the table on page 2. We move to the top of page three. Item 16 remains on the table. Item 17, do I have a motion to remove from the table? Motion, motion made by Councilor Sakala, second, second by Deputy Mayor Suzak, removing the Planning and Zoning Commission vacancy. All those in favor of moving from the table by a show of hands. Opposed, abstention. That's 11 in favor and zero against, Sheila, to remove from the table. Do I have a nomination, please? Yes. Councilor Bosco. Uh, uh, John Petronella. Motion made. Seconded by Councilor Sparaz and Council Mangini. Any a motion to close nominations? So moved. Deputy Mayor Suzak, seconded by Council <laughs> Riley. All those in favor of closing nominations by show of hands. Opposed, abstention. 11 in favor and zero against Sheila for closing nominations. Any discussion on the main motion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councilor Muller. Four. Councilor Riley. Riley. Four. Councilor Sparaz. Four. Deputy, Deputy Mayor, Mayor Suzak. Suzak. John Petronella. Councillor Ungar. Four. Councillor Bosco. John Petronella. Councillor Sakala. John Petronella. Councillor Cassati. Four. Councillor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. John Petronella. That's 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item 18 remains on the table. Moving on to item B, under old business, old appointments by the town manager, appointing council approved one through 10. We have none. To the top of page four, again, town manager appointed council approved 11 through 16. Again, we have none. Under old business, C, appointments, PNZ commission or council approved. We have none. Item D, discussion resolution, MOU with the fire districts remains on the table. 
Item 13, new business. Item A, consent agenda. Uh, again, we have none. Item B, under new business, town council appointments. There are none. Item C, under new business, town manager appointment, council approved. There are none. Item D, on P and Z, commission appointed, council approved under new business. Again, there are none. Moving on to item 14, items for discussion. Item A, consent agenda, we have none. Item B, appointments by the town council. Again, we have none. Item C, town manager appointed, council approved. Again, there are none. Item D, P and Z, commission appointed, council approved. Again, there are none. We move items E through L have been moved to miscellaneous. Item 15, we're in miscellaneous. Item E. Discussion resolution request a transfer of funds for community development rail station project 57,681. Sorry, one second. I had the wrong resolution. Be resolve that in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 8, after the town charter, the following transfer is hereby made to rail station 57,681 from CIP revenue fiscal year 18, other federal funds, federal highway grant of 57,681. Certify the above. Stated funds are available as of March 5th, 2021 by our Director of Finance, Jan, John Wilcox, and approved by our Town Manager, Chris Bromson. So, so moved. Count, moved by Council Mangini, seconded by Councilor Muller. Uh, Mr. Bromson, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, this is basically the earmark we talked about that the town received for the intermodal station um, and the Eversource property and the casket building area. It was in 2007, and, and this is a housekeeping we received uh, in 2020, a reimbursement of this amount, 57681 but the funds were never transferred from revenue to expense, so we're simply transferring them for future payment out of that account for those purposes. Thank you. Is there any questions for the town manager? Hearing none, uh, Sheila, roll call, please. Councilor Muller. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Sassafra. Four. Uh, Deputy uh, Mayor Suzak. Four. Councilor Ungar. Four. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Sakala. Four. Councilor Casati. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. That's 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Moving under miscellaneous item F. Discussing resolution. Resolution increasing teacher aid hourly pay rate to one, by a dollar thirty. We're having to turn over to Deputy Mayor. When I Susan. turn that over, Mike's going to recuse himself from the vote here. It says Enfield um, Town Council re resolution increasing teachers' aid hourly pay rate by dollar thirty. Resolved that in accordance with Chapter Seven, Section Two of the Town Charter, the Enfield Town Council does hereby amend the wage adjustment of the teachers' aid position, increasing current aids by $1.30 an hour and the starting wage to $14 per hour. Submitted March 5th, 2021. Submitted by Steve Belinda, Human Resources. So moved. So moved. Madam Deputy Mayor, if I might, uh, this seems simple, uh, but there's a little more to it because it involves the elimination of some full-time positions uh, to accomplish this, but we'll also have uh, in the long-term cost savings to the town. So for that reason, Steve Belinda and Karen Edelson are available. Steve, you are gonna make a short presentation to be available to both of you for questions. Uh, good evening, Town Council and uh, folks at home. As many of you are aware, we have a, a, a Enfield Child Development Center that is well-run and actually nationally certified. You may know of employees, uh, children, grandchildren that go there. And um, recently I was talking to uh, Karen Edelson, the Early Care and Education Program Manager, of a dilemma that she has. And um, the dilemma is this. We have a certain position, teacher aides, that um, we have a lot of employee churn. Uh, we either have good people that we're losing to market forces with um, Massachusetts paying more for the exact same position, a local uh, centers paying more, even retailers paying up to $4 more. It's hard to retain uh, uh, teacher aides in this position, or alternatively, we're terminating people because they just weren't fit for the job. And I don't care what title you are, anyone that works that we entrust with our children is an important position. So uh, Karen had a quite uh, novel and innovative idea. She came to me and said, you know what, Steve, we have two positions that have been vacant for the entire year. She can get by without uh, filling those positions. And in turn, 
use some of the proceeds from not funding those positions and plow it back into the remaining teacher aides to give them the boost that they need so we can stop this employee churn. I talked to my staff here in uh, HR and they were saying, yeah, this is one position that we're constantly filling over and over again. We're doing orientations, we're assuming time, uh, probation periods, review on Karen and her staff, and before you know it, they're not making it and we are, we're terminating. That's not the way to run a center. So um, uh, I presented this idea to town manager, Chris Bronson, and he's always one for innovative ideas. And, and uh, when I told him that there's a cost savings of immediately of uh, $3,651 plus approximately $60,000 in savings that we don't have to pay for health insurance for. He liked it and he said, and he was able to put it on the agenda. His only concern is, are we compromising the integrity of the program by abolishing these two positions? I went back to Karen and she assured me that she's not. Um, she's on board here too to answer any specific questions that you may have regarding the viability of this proposal. If anyone has any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Cindy, then Charlotte, then Gina. Thank you. Thank you, um, Steve, for your overview. My concern um, question to you, is this enough? I mean, isn't minimum wage $15 per not hour? Not yet. Are, are, um, well, currently um, it is uh, tiered, but it's not. We still have a few years before we get to $15 an hour. So that, again, my question is, aside from the fact that we're not at the minimum wage of the $15, is this a fair amount to, to pay our workers that do care for our children? Karen, do you want to answer that? Or? You know, I, it's what we can do at the moment with, um, you know, staying within budget. Um, I certainly think, you know, they deserve well more than that. They are caring for, you know, young children, but this is the best that we can do right now. And it gets us a year ahead of the Connecticut state minimum wage, which is going up $13 an hour. So I feel like, you know, the dollar thirty increase to get them from the twelve seventy to start at 14 gives us a good jump ahead on ahead of things to start with. And I credit you, Karen, for your innovative thinking. That's really a great move on your part. Um, Thank you. We, we have not seen the budget. Council has not seen the budget. But I'm almost wondering if this um, piece might be in the budget or perhaps uh, talked about in our budget. I'm going to make a note myself because it just seems to me that if you you know, go to work at McDonald's, you might make the same amount. And again, I'm just talking off the top of my head, but Steve, you said it very um, succinctly that these are our children that we're caring for. And, and we definitely need to um, give, you know, more credence to that level of um, employ than, you know, to someone who's dealing with a, a non uh, child or, you know, person issue. So I, I definitely will support this, but I really would like to see more. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the two positions that we won't fill, um, is that that's not jeopardizing um, aid to um, children ratios or conversely um, by not filling those two roles, does that um, limit our ability to um, have more children in the center as well? No, I am able to um, operate to full potential without those two positions. Um, that's just helping um, by not, by getting more permanent people here. I'm constantly having vacancies with the turnover that um, Steve spoke about. So this will uh, eliminate myself and the other administrators from having to cover in classroom and work extra hours to get our administrative work done. So by having a full solid set of um, the staff that I need that will allow us to be at our full potential. You know, kids need stability. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Gina? I guess my question is, or comment, is kind of on the same lines as Charlotte's. Now, are you going to eliminate these two positions or are you just going to keep them there and not fill them? Because I guess I'm, I'm wondering why this has to be mutually exclusive. 
Well, uh, the reason why we're, we want to let you know that we're not funding them uh, yeah. to help uh, offset the increase that we want to give the remaining teachers aids. I mean, the town always has the ability to expand and contract positions going forward. But in the current budget, it's uh, these two positions have been designated to be fulfilled. And what Karen is doing is saying, we don't want to fill these two positions. In the future, if this uh, center goes gangbusters and we need more help, by all means, we will address that. We're not handcuffed from always asking for more help, but at the current um, moment, uh, we don't need that. We just need to make sure that we have uh, um, efficiency and we work leaner in keeping the help that we do need. Uh, I mean, let's be honest, everybody likes savings, right? Everybody up here, everybody in the town, every, every work, we all like savings. And I think you're gonna be hard pressed to find somebody who doesn't want to give you all the teacher's aides and the staffs that you need. That being said, is are these two positions positions that you just didn't need so you didn't fill them or you just couldn't fill them because you didn't find the personnel to fill them? Well, one was, um, I don't know, it was a workman's comp um, injury that was for quite an extended amount of time. So I wasn't able to fill it. Um, and I supplemented that with um, part-time aides and like myself filling in and other administrators when um, needed. And then the other position is just one of those full-time aid positions that I just haven't been able to fill at a starting rate of twelve seventy an hour. Um, but I, I have a couple of vacancies. I've always had a couple of vacancies because of that pay rate. So, and we're shuffling to make things work. But by eliminating this one aid position and the other um, position that was filled by a workman's comp case will allow me the ability to fill with qualified people that will be here and will have consistency and longevity, I hope, within, you know, the town and at the center. Okay. Any more questions? You are welcome. Lori, any questions? Bob? Yeah, um, yes, uh, this is for Karen. Uh, how many uh, teacher aides do you presently have? Um, I presently have right now uh, 15 full-time aides. And then my part-time aides, I have about five that are working. And those part-time hours can work anywhere from, I have some that just work 10 hours a week, and I have others that work about 25. And with this additional dollar thirty increase, I'm looking for about seven part-time positions at 25 hours. And again, I think with that increased amount, I'll be able to entice those people to work for us. Okay, uh, well, thank you. Uh, You're that, welcome. Yeah, thanks. I'm good, thank you. Okay. Okay, we're ready for a vote now, Sheila? Yes, yes. Um, um, Councilor, Councilor Muller? Four. Four. Councilor, Councilor Riley? Riley? Four. Councilor, Councilor Sopraza? Four. Deputy, Deputy Mayor Susak? Four. Councilor Ungar? Four. Councilor Bosco? Four. Councilor Sakala? Four. Councilor Prasadi? Four. Councilor Hemler? Four. And Councilor Mangini, Mayor, Mayor uh, Ludwig is abstaining. Councilor Mangini? Four. Okay, that's 10 members um, in favor, none against, and one abstention. Thank you, Sheila. Moving on to item G, discussion resolution. Resolution authorizing the disposition of town-owned surplus personal property. <clears throat> Whereas the town of Enfield adopted resolution number 3002, establishing a policy for the, the disposition of town-owned surplus personal property. And whereas surplus property is defined as tangible personal property owned by the town of Enfield that has been determined to be unneeded present, pre pre okay, I'm not speaking well, presently or in the foreseeable future, and that is no longer of value or use to the town. And whereas the policy requires the town council approval, uh, town council approve the, dispos the disposition of surplus property valued at $6,000 or more. Whereas the Department of Public Works has identified the property listed on attachment A as surplus property valued at $6,000 or more, whereas the town manager has reviewed the recommendation by the Department of Public Works and now seeks the town council approval. 
Now, therefore, be it resolved, the disposal of the property listed in the attachment A pursuant to the policy of the disposition of town-owned surplus, town surplus personal property is hereby approved, prepared on March 3rd, 2021, by the Public Works Business Manager. So moved. By Councilor Mangini. Second. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. Sorry for the mispronunciation. Uh, I know Donald's on, Chris. I don't know if you want to turn uh, Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Mayor, uh, because our policy uh, enunciates that any property that's valued over $6,000 uh, needs a council vote, um, Mr. Nunes is present. I'm just going to tell you that a couple of items coming up after this, I, I am going to dispense because of COVID and being remote, I had directors come. Uh, this is not a good use of the, time, uh, of the time of the public works director to sit here for three hours to answer a question about something that's going to be auctioned off. And I'm not criticizing anybody but myself because I should have caught it earlier. Our, our former policy, which I'd like to get back to, is that when we have this on the agenda, that in your caucuses on the weekend, if you have a specific question, you could forward it and I'll get you an, an answer during the day. Um, because uh, the Public Works Director and all the Public Works is straight out with building consolidation and all the other projects. And this, I, I apologize, I was remiss, but to have him sit for two, three hours to answer this question is not a good use of his time. So going forward, I will not have department directors uh, on the call because just to be quite frank, it's very expensive to have them on the call to answer something uh, as simple as this. But I didn't catch it in time. So having said that, moving forward, uh, we will try to uh, eliminate that in the future. But with that, Mr. Nunes, uh, maybe give a short overview to pay for your, uh, you know, wages this evening. Say something that's worth it. Well, you know, Donald, welcome. And again, again, maybe even just a little overview since you, you know, you sat patiently. I agree. This is a uh, this is but a valuable program that I, I think we've done over the last few years. That again, continue to. You know, again, someone else's, you know, gold is someone else's garbage. And I think this is great that, again, we're not just, you know, disposing of property. We're actually getting a little money for it. Yeah, this, this vehicle in particular is a replacement vehicle. So the new one has arrived in Connecticut. It just has its final touches uh, put on for it before we get out on the road. Um, right now, this, this 2005 front loader uh, is currently is parked and it's not usable right now. We're trying to avoid having, uh, we need a full brake job at $2,500. We have to do some exhaust manifold work and some other seals at, an, at another thousand. And there's some other miscellaneous repairs at another thousand. So we could be looking at almost $4,500 of repairs. So it's just time for us to get rid of this and um, for the, the tremendous amount of mileage, I mean, hours on it and miles, it's just time to get rid of the, the vehicle. and. Again, th there is a replacement for it. It's in Connecticut, and we should be getting it shortly. Thank you, Donald. Any questions for Director of Public Works? Again, we appreciate you hanging in there. And again, this is a great oh, this is a great program that again just goes to show that we're constantly trying to recycle uh, vehicles and and get a little bit of money that helps helps your budget. It it has been it's been proven and it's been very helpful to us. So it's been great. Appreciate yep. it. Um, roll call, please, Sheila. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Lestrasse. Four. Deputy Mayor Susick. Four. Councillor Ungaya. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Cassati. Four. Councillor Hamler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. That's 11 in favor. None against and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Moving on to item H, discussion resolution, a resolution to amend cha cha chapter 26, article one, section 26-35 of the code of Enf Enfield, Connecticut, ED EDC membership. Whereas the town council expanded the membership of the Enfield Economic Development Commission, also known as the commission, by resolution number 4184 on June 6, 2017. Whereas Connecticut general statute 7-136 allows for total commission membership of not less than five and no more than 15, whereas the commission's current membership consists of 15 members and is unable to constitute a quorum, whereas the town council would like to reduce the commission's membership to nine members. Now, therefore, be it resolved that, that, the, that after a public hearing was held on March 1st, 2021, with no objection, the Anfield Town Council hereby amends Chapter 26, Article 1, Section 26-35 of the Code of, of Enfield, of the Code of Enfield, Connecticut. So moved. By Councilor Muller. Second. Second by Councilor Mangini. Pretty straightforward. I don't know if there's any questions from anyone on this. You know, we had a public hearing last meeting. Hearing none, roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor Muller. Four. 
Councilor Riley? Four. Councilor Supraza? Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak? Four. Councilor Ungar? Four. Councilor Bosco? Four. Councilor Sakala? Four. Councilor Crisati? Four. Councilor Hemler? Four. Mayor Ludwig? Four. Councilor Mangini? Four. It's 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. We move on to item I under miscellaneous. Discussion resolution. The resolution set a public hearing in order to amend the town of Enfield tax increment financing policy regarding structure. Whereas the Enfield Town Council adopted the town of Enfield tax increment financing, also known as the TIF policy, on June 3rd, 2019. Whereas the TIF policy provides for the designation of nine person TIF advisory committee. Whereas the town council wishes to modify the TIF policy as to the membership of the TIF advisory committee to, to include five members, which two members of the town council, one member from each of the from one member each from Economic Development Commission and from the Conservation Commission and Planning and Zoning Commission, and then with the Director of Development Services, Director of Finance, and Supervisor of Assessment and Revenue Collection acting as staff to the TIF committee. Whereas the TIF policy requires a public hearing for any modifications there too. Be it resolved now. Be it resolved that the Enfield Town Council will hold a public hearing in the Enfield Town Hall Ch Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, on Monday, April 5th, 2021, at 6:50 p.m. to allow interested residents an opportunity to express their opinion regarding the proposed modification of the tax incentive finance policy as to the membership of the TIF Advisory Committee. So moved by Council Mangini, seconded by Council Dep by Deputy Mayor Suzak. I know Chris uh, Laurie's also been patient. I don't know if. Uh, no, this this is simple. This is yeah. the beginning of the process that we just completed on the last. This is the the same as the Economic Development Commission process. We're going to uh, ask for public hearing simply uh, on the TIF Commission. They included really erroneously when we adopted it in 2019 that um, Lori and the town attorney should be on it. We're correcting it. They should not be voting members. So this simply is uh, going to be a, a resolution to remove them and we're just going to have a public hearing for that purpose got it any comments any questions hearing none roll call please sheila councillor muller four councillor riley four councillor sopraza four councillor suzette four councillor ungar four councillor bosco four councillor sakala four councillor crisati four Councillor Hamler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. That's 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item J in a miscellaneous discussion resolution. Resolution referring the proposed redevelopment of the land located at 124 North Maple Street to Planning and Zoning Commission. Whereas the town of Enfield, also known as the town, owns the property located at 124 North Maple Street, also known as the Enfield Annex. And whereas the town intends to construct a permanent steel structure with a concrete slab in a northerly parking lot adjacent to Moody Road. Whereas the Enfield Town Council must refer this proposed improvement to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a report in conformance with the requirements of Connecticut General Statute 8-24. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the proposed improvement listed above is referred to the Planning and Zoning Commission in conformance with the requirements of the Connecticut General Statute 8-24, prepared by the Town Manager's Office on March 3rd, 2021. So moved. By Councillor Riley, seconded by Councillor Muller. I mean, this is, Mr. you know, yeah, go ahead, Chris. May, yes, the next, all, the next all three. The, yep. These next three, these are statutory required referrals yep. to the planning and zoning. This is a permanent structure with concrete pad. We previously funded it uh, through the consolidation plan. It's a butler building for equipment for B&G, be housed at the annex. And then the next two, council previously uh, approved the building of a basketball court at Lafayette or a repair, basically, and, and renewal of one and one at Alcorn which is the third item. So those are the three we're, we've approved it. We funded them. This is uh, referring them to planning and zoning for approval. It'll come back to us. Yep. Any questions? I think fairly straightforward. Any questions? Hearing none, roll call, please, Sheila. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Sopraza. Four. Councillor um, Deputy Mayor Sousa. Four. Councillor Ungar. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala? Four. Councillor Crisati? Four. Councillor Hemler? Four. Mayor Ludwig? Four. Councillor Mangini? Four. 
the 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Moving on to item K and under miscellaneous discussion resolution. Resolution referring the proposed redevelopment of land located at 558 Enfield Street, also known as Lafayette Park, to Planning and Zoning Commission. Whereas the town of Enfield, also known as the town, owns a property located at 558 Enfield Street, La uh, Lafayette Park. And whereas the town intends to replace an existing dilapidated basketball court at the property with a new full size outdoor basketball court. Whereas the Enfield Town Council must refer this proposed improvement to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a report in, com in conformance with the requirements of Connecticut General Statute 8-24. Now, therefore, for, now, therefore, be it resolved that the proposed improvement listed above is referred to the Planning and Zoning Commission in conformance with the requirements of Connecticut General Statute 8-24, uh, prepared by the Town Manager's Office on March 3rd, 2021. So moved. By Councilor Mangini, seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. Again, uh, similarly, what we just voted on, any questions? Hearing none, roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor Miller. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Supraza. Four. Uh, Deputy, Deputy Mayor, Mayor Suzak. Suzak. Four. Councilor Ungar. Four. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Sakala. Four. Councilor Crisotti. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. 11 member, uh, 11 in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. We move on to item L under res on miscellaneous. Discussion resolution, resolution referring the proposed redevelopment of land located at 1010 Enfield Street to Planning and Zoning Commission, whereas the town of Enfield, known as the town, owns a property located at 1010 Enfield Street, former, former Thomas G. Alcorn School, whereas the town intends to build a new basketball court, and whereas the town intends to expand and repave the existing parking lot, adding seven, 75 parking spaces. Whereas the town, the Enfield Town Council must refer, refer the propo proposed improvements to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a report in conformance with the requirements of Connecticut General Statute 8-24. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the proposed improvements listed above are referred to the Planning and Zoning Commission in conformance with the requirements of Connecticut General Statute 8-24, prepared by the Town Manager's Office on March 3rd, 2021. By Councilor Sakala. Second. Seconded by Councilor Mangini. Again, third in line of uh, re referrals over to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Seeing no questions, roll call please, Sheila. Councilor, Councilor Muller. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Supraza. Four. Deputy, Deputy Mayor Souza. Four. Councilor Ungar. Four. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Sakala. Four. Councilor Crisotti. Four. Councilor Hemmer. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Eleven in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, move on to item 16, public communications. Uh, we have none. We move on to 17, Councilor Communications. Any Councilor has a communication? Seeing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. By Council so moved. Deputy Mayor Suvac, seconded by Councilor Strauss. All those in favor, by show of hands. 11 in favor, zero against, Sheila. Good night, everyone. Thank you for your patience, and have a great night. Have a good night.